the astronomical odds of the road that Hackney's has gone on for the last 12 months. Coming into this tournament, he was like a pit bull. I'm sorry, baby, I don't mean to be rude. I'm just a little different from all these dudes. I've never heard him talk about fishing the way he did during the off season, getting ready to get back into the Bassmaster Elite Series. Now today's the first day of practice for the Elite Series. And it's really not that bad of weather. It's been really bad cold here. And so uh, looks like we dodged a bullet this week and it's gonna be pretty nice. It's all good. That's just my attitude. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's just my attitude. The only good thing about the day is they bite. It's been terribly cold here. Like it's, like we're, we're gonna have a week as long as I have one, because I can really care less about the rest of it. <laughs> I hate to be that, but I'm like, I'm a team player, but I'm the only one on the team. You know, I recently requalified for the Elite Series, which I think I had fished for several years. A couple years I went to Major League Fishing and fished over there for a couple years, and then uh, I just recently requalified for the Elite Series, and, and honestly, I'm so glad I came back. The other deal is a, a totally different format from Bassmaster and you know, I just, I never was, I was competitive at it, but I didn't like it. I just, I felt like it rushed me and I didn't get to do the things that I enjoyed doing. It just seemed like I would find fish that I would want to fish for and couldn't because they wouldn't work under that format. So that was one of the reasons I came back. I'll be honest with you, I like to hold fish up on stage and I like to show people what I catch. Back with 35 pounds and an ounce, Greg Hackney moves into third place. It's just a different deal at Bassmaster. And for me, it was like a homecoming. It really was. I'm, I'm so glad to go back. And then, of course, you never know how you're going to do. My first event was a good one. I finished second at the St. John's River. 22 pounds, 10 ounces, 22, 10. And with that, the hack attack is back. Hopefully, like I said, to carry some of that momentum on this week. Still got to make yeah. them hit it. We get three days for the Elite Series. This is day one of practice. And, um, you know, really, I'm just trying to find as many areas and patterns as I can, you know, because, you know, the events last for four days and it, it only takes 20 bass to win the tournament. It will take a lot of fish over four days and a lot of area to come up with the right 20. Gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids. Ooh, and for kids, just kids. That's wealth years and years. Promise my brother as soon as he out and finish this bid, we finna do it big. We don't want to catch another one. I mean, I've already caught enough fish today, period, you know, but I just keep, I know there's a lot of fish here. You know what I mean? Like catching one ain't hurting, but I don't want to catch two because the next one might be that big. So that's the only thing. Like when I'm catching nice ones, I'll roll. Now if they're little ones, I'll keep burning them. But when they're nice ones, nice ones hang out with big ones, you know, and I just don't take a chance. I've already caught one big one today, but I, I'm kind of glad I caught it. It was my second bite because it gave me a lot of confidence. You know what I mean? how I caught my biggest one yesterday. You know, yesterday morning when it was raining, you know, I catch me a tub, so I'm like, but I need bad weather. That I, I, I see, that's the whole deal with it. You know, I did catch one or two on it yesterday afternoon, but it was after that wind got real bad. When it gets like this, you can't, you know. The first day of the tournament, they call for it to be like this. You know, so I'm hoping I can get some kind of jig bite going, or, you know, bottom bait to survive through that first day. And then that second day, we're gonna have the same weather like yesterday. There he is. Another pretty nice one, I think. I don't know. Yeah, it's not quite as big, but it's a nice one. I just don't want that boat over there, you know, just stop. Sometimes you just gotta act like you're doing something else.
one of my biggest goals for coming back was to make it back to the Bassmaster Classic. You know, really that's the only major title in the sport of bass fishing that I haven't, I haven't won. And, you know, fishing over there, I wasn't gonna have a chance to win it. And I, you know, I thought at one time maybe I could live without that. You know, I wasn't basing my career on a classic win, but I guess I was. I needed to come back. I need to have that shot at the Bassmaster Classic. So, you know, finishing second at the first one, I got good points. I just needed to just keep rolling. You know, I'm 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 hungry. I'm <laughs> I'm a seasoned veteran. You know, I'm definitely not a rookie. This is definitely not my rookie season, but I, it's almost like I started my career over. I can't explain that, but it has that feeling like I'm enjoying fishing right now as much as I ever have. Now you erased all that from here every morning, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's play this clip at the Christmas party. <laughs> I'm real particular about having everything perfect, you know, preparing for every situation. And uh, I, this is something that I don't like to be rushed. This is gonna be one of those tournaments that's quite challenging. So I just wanna have, I wanna be ready for every situation. I don't want to have to be rigging anything during the uh, during the event. I want to have it all done. You know, if you got everything right, I think I'll fish better. If I'm not looking for anything or I know where everything is located, you know, I'm just a lot more apt to fish, a lot more confident that way. So. This will help get some of the sand off that I had on my motor because of Mark Copley. competition here. It's new guys, guys that I don't know. It's almost like when I came to the Elite Series the first time, I didn't know anybody. You know, I was a new guy and I'm kind of like that now. And boat 100, Greg Hackney. That's the end of flight four. Good luck, guys. Good luck, Greg. It's pretty cool. It's, it makes you nervous, you know, to be around people you don't know. But it is, in another way, it's, it's a cool deal, it's a cool feeling, and uh, like I said, I'm enjoying being here. This is gonna be an amazing week here. First two days of this event, we've got 100 anglers competing. We're gonna whittle the field down to the top 50 after the first two days, so today and tomorrow we will weigh in here the entire field, and then after the first two days, we'll move on to semifinals Saturday with just 50 anglers, and they will weigh in up at the uh, World Fair Park. We'll be up there for Saturday and Sunday, and on Saturday we'll have 50 anglers, and on Sunday it'll be the top 10 to fish on Championship Sunday. I gotta start, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it it's not a disaster, but it's definitely, I'm, I'm still about two bites away from, I just didn't catch the quality that I caught the first day of practice, you know what I mean? Like I just didn't have a limit of three pounders, you know? I heard him say 15 was leading, so. <laughs> 12 would keep me in the hunt. We're gonna have that bad weather. I don't really have anything to, I don't really have anything to hold up. All right. Yeah, I don't have, they're all about the same size. Uh, I'm glad to have them. It's tough out there, it's tough weather we had today. You would think when it's real nice like that, it's good for sunbathing, it's not good for fishing. You know, bad as I hate to say it, I'm looking forward to that weather tomorrow. Day number two at the Guaranteed Rate of Bassmaster Elite on Tennessee River. I kind of wish I had to wait for this weather. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's only the second event of the year, but I, I fished enough of these to know that you get it when you can get it. You know what I mean? We'll go to t different places and all over the country and you'll see different guys do better or whatever. Once you get below 15 to 20, these guys who got them one day and didn't get them the next day. 
I've been doing this long enough to know that when you get an opportunity, you try to make the most of it. So. The fish is the most important thing. If, we, if you throw him off, we'll come back and get him. <laughs> I've been better. <laughs> but I'm still hanging in there. It was a little tough out there today. How are you? A little slower. All the disappointments for that one chance at that pinnacle. Fishing like this, we riding the roller coaster. Ooh, sometimes it's so fun, and then sometimes it's like a crazy girlfriend. Get her away from me. I think probably the biggest thing that happened today, I didn't notice the water down yesterday. And this morning when I started, I was like, man, it looks like it's down about 10 inches or so. And I rotated around, and by the time in a couple hours later, I came back and ran some of the same water, and it was down another foot. You know, I've been catching them on a little old flat side and catching them on a uh, thunder cricket, my bigger ones. And, uh, well, today it was just a grind. I mean, it's been a grind. Now, I've only been getting like eight or nine bites a day, and today I only had six, and of course I only caught three of them. Look for places where I think it might congregate fish, and I'm gonna run those places. Uh, it'll still be in the area, you know, where I've been fishing, but I'm just completely abandoning the way I was fishing and just target different areas inside the same area because I know the fish are there because they were there before. So. Currently, we are our Angler of the Year race for the 2014 Angler of the Year from Gonzales, Louisiana, the Hack Attack, Brent Hackney. I take it you handing out bags? Yes, sir. I'll take it. Well, I'll just stick it in the boat. I won't run I won't run off with it. Could you see that? I just grab my fish and break and run up there. I gotta go now. I'm ready to get this over with. Do you got five today? I do not. I have three. Was it tough? Uh I don't think it was that tough. I just think I made it tough. I'm ready to get her and get it over with, to be honest with you. It's time for me to to leave this place and move on. There's greener pastures for me to <laughs> somewhere. I am, uh, I, you know, the deal is when you don't have a good day, you don't want to hang around. I had, so I've had two days of it. Now yesterday turned out to be a good day because I got to fish today, but today was real similar to yesterday and my performance. And so when your performance is not good, you hate to, it doesn't, it just bothers me. It, it won't bother the, all these people out here. Like I noticed, like most of the time, two days from now, they won't remember. You, does that make sense? Like, but I will remember two years from now. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I'll be in a hurry to get somewhere private and uh, maybe have myself a libation. the astronomical odds of the road that Hack News has gone on for the last 12 months. Coming into this tournament, he was like a pit bull. One of, one of my biggest weaknesses, and there are several weaknesses, I stutter a lot. Like I stutter, there, there used to be, before we were on Fox, when I worked at, uh, for ESPN, there was an ESPN, you know, on camera talent coach. And he's like, you want to say something so bad, you start stuttering, and you're like a machine gun. So I, I wouldn't necessarily think that this is a, that good of an idea. But when you get this far into the tournament, all your words start running together. <laughs> like you're totally out of stuff to say. your job and a, and, a, and a bunch of you love your job um, I've worked jobs that I hated you know so I've done television now for two decades I fished my entire life like I live on the lake where I won my my first tournament when I was nine years old I've been around bass fishing my whole life but when I got into television I always use this term to this day is I worked threatened there he is a big one. I mean, got it. Got it. How about it? 
look at that. That's how you want him to get it right there, friends. Woo! That's awesome. That is awesome. I, I always worked like there's somebody over my shoulder that wanted to, you know, take my job. There he is. Oh, that's a big fish bait, man. When you find the job that you love, that you have passion for, that you wake up for, you know, always work like it might get taken away. And, and that's probably why I work and tape 465 days of the year. So when I started, this is like almost my 20th year covering the Elite Series. I remember back in the day when we started doing live stuff, like we would do a, a 15 minute hit at the end of the day, is going to dinner with Sanders and going, the heck are we doing so much live stuff for? We did 15 minutes today, right? Now we do like, um, I think we do 30 something hours of live each event. <laughs> when, when we first, you know, when Mike McKinnis said we were gonna go live for 90 hours a week, I was like, who in the hell would watch bass fishing for that many hours? <laughs> right? Every one of us, right? All of our lives since 2020 are drastically different. Some people had it way worse, but I, you know, I caught COVID. My wife had COVID. One of my one of my twin boys, uh, Jacob, had it. And we all learned, every one of us learned how to adjust our life to a new world, a new world that we lived in. So I started, I remember last year, before we were on Fox, we, we started covering live events on ESPN, full Bassmaster Elite Series tournaments. And we made a, a studio upstairs in my house because of every, you know, there was lockdowns and people couldn't travel. So I we made a studio to where I was able to communicate with, with Tommy Sanders and not be in studio, but yet be in studio. So coming into here, uh, if you come around the right-hand side, um, if you come back here, here's the control center. We've got a big monitor right here and a smaller one. And what we'll do is we'll connect to Bassmaster Studio in Little Rock, Arkansas. And so the anglers are actually on the water right now. We're at the midday break. Hackney was losing by like, gosh, I'm gonna say like by like six or seven pounds. Brian New from North Carolina was leading a rookie on the Elite Series. Um, so we'll go live. I'll connect with Tommy. We'll do an audio check and wrap up the event. So it is 11. 50 and we'll go live at noon and and one of the one of the weird things is I used to get like so much anxiety before we would go live you know where you're like I don't know what words are and, and um but but after you do so many live hours it's almost like it's actually more weird to function in real world than it is online stuff, if that makes any sense. What's really interesting about, and I'm, I'm very lucky, you know, I host the Bassmaster Elite Series, Zona's Awesome Fishing Show, Zona Live, and at the Bass Pros television show, and I, I get to, to jump in quite a bit on, on Strike King's Pro Team Journal every year, and, and it's phenomenal, you know, the, like, the best part of my job is my job find something like that you know i've done it for 20 years the worst part of my job of doing it 20 years is the calendar <laughs> right? there, there, i mean there's only there's only so many days in the year and that's a lot of different hats to wear like we just finished the first bassmaster elite series tournament i, I was in, in the studio upstairs and you i i literally 
I walked out of the studio, you take off, you know, commentating a professional tournament, and I instantly go into Zona Show mode, getting ready to tape a bunch of stuff tomorrow. The best part of my job is my job. The worst part is uh, it's my, my docket is, is a bit of a challenge because I don't, I tend to not say no, you know, and that's what having a job is. Like everything, it's almost like my tackle is regionalized. Like I just got, I just got back from South Texas, ton of bladed jigs, big topwater baits, frogs, big, big er crankbaits, big er jigs. So, you know, and when I go up north, it's smaller swim baits, coffee tubes. Uh, so almost every box is almost like its own state or region that I'm gonna go you know, tape in or do content in. As much as I wanna go to the popular places in the country, the Lake Forks and the Gunnersville and Lake St. Clair, I also wanna find those little, to me the most fun that I have is searching and then finding those little hidden gems that uh, are out there, cause they're out there, you just have to, you have to do, I sit on my couch and do a lot of homework on Google Earth, finding a lot of the places that we go to. Here's a look at the reels, and whatever you see in the white boxes or don't see, those are all prototypes. Those are prototypes that uh, guy, you know, Rocky and, and Jason McKee, fellas from Striking and Lose, tell me to take out and just go torture it and, and find out you know, what, what's that real strength? What, where do we need to work on? So that's all of that right there. Another thing, if you kind of come over here, and again, apologize with all the, I mean, it's a circus in here. Uh, one of the, the questions I get, if you look at, you know, the, the Strike King wall right here is, do you know, what, <laughs> you have a lot of stuff here, but going through a season of Zona Show, Protein Journal, uh, the Bass Pros, and all the internet stuff we we go through, is this wall will inevitably get replaced in one season. In one season, we will we will go through that much stuff. We were down at Choke Canyon a couple weeks ago. There is no science to putting these decals on. Okay. What I do is I kind of lay them there, and then I take a bump board. This is how scientific this is and I'll center it off. I'll center it off. All right, there looks good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good, good. Doesn't have to be exact, not an exact science. That's crooked. It's weird, there's a lot of, like there's a, a ton of memories in this barn. My kids used to fish throughout high school and college. Like their job was was tournaments, you know, around here, and they made. I mean, they made enough money to where they could look at me and say, "Hey, we're not getting a part time job." And and a lot of that stuff up there is is accomplishments from, uh, you know, right right before they went really off to Michigan State and they do their own thing now. But uh, cool memories. You know, and, and I think the the most surprising thing with Hackney was I pick him up, I put him down. I pick him up, I put him down. He did not touch all of his cypress trees in Lake George on Saturday. He said, "Look, man, I've got some great, great stretches left." And he said, "Really, I underestimated the size of the fish that I was catching throughout practice." He said, "There's no doubt in my mind, I can go back there and do another 22 pounds if they fire." Greg Hackney getting bites, but definitely not connecting with the, I mean, look, he has a spinning rod in his hand, Tommy Sanders. <laughs>